我先开 recording 好了。那里有网络孔啊，还是你们？哎，现在几分？我时间上去拿吗？现在快上课了，先不要好。今天先算了。今天先算了，我等一下再试一下。他老师如果有加薪，我是跟他说，叫他们填线上表单就好了。对啊，线上表单就好了。<笑>还悲惨呢。老师，那这样子的话，就是老师，你这哎、欸、是礼拜三之前会跟我们说提好吗？然后我们礼拜三应该是礼拜三晚上，我会跟你讲提好啊，下午晚上。哦、嗯嗯，然后我们在礼拜三再把作业做上去。对啊，对啊，对啊。那、啊、那个这个礼拜三我们第一堂课会不会有开门的？什么意思？哦，我不知道哎、欸。啊<笑>，我在我们会有这个问题吗？是西藏的开门。第一堂课就是我看之前都是他们的助教会开门开两次。哦，那可能要请你们来开门一下。好，我再去问一下西藏的。OK。好。然后这样，好吧，我们现在去问。OK， 也可以。好，正式我们从这边开始。OK， 呃，你们跨圈。好I guess CS department still conference, but after that, maybe, maybe all the way to international students. But you are all ECS, right? Yeah. Yeah, ECS are all for me. Yeah, it's okay. But, but, but you can have, don't you have a course in E department? Department should have you should also offer in the other class. You should study in the other class in the department. Okay, I will see. Yeah, I will see. Yeah, I will see. Yeah, I will see. Yeah, I will see. Uh, I mean the person, uh, I mean the persons, uh, for add-ons, uh, they have any requirement for that because uh, I think they have a lot of people try to add-on, so uh, how do uh, I, I Yeah, okay, I see. So, yeah, I will see. Maybe. <laughs> but I have no guarantee, but you can, yeah, yeah, but probably. So, so only on the Friday night we can know the results of the day, uh, of the age. Yeah, but uh, maybe it will be a little earlier, but but Friday, Friday will I will make decisions. Uh, yeah. Oh, Friday. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Question. Okay, you are so we are so then 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 yeah. Okay. Maybe this is what you get to do after. Uh. Okay, let's get started. And. And uh, sorry, so there is some technical difficulty. So things like the Wi-Fi in this classroom is really bad. So uh, we are actually having trouble streaming here. And so the past few classes uh, probably didn't have video anymore because the uh, streaming failed. Because the Wi-Fi is too bad. And uh, I'm not sure how streaming is working right now. But for this one, I have a recording. And uh, hopefully, we can solve the internet issue next class. Okay, so there is that, and uh, okay, so there's technical issue, hopefully you can solve the streaming next class, and, but other than that, 
I guess uh, back to course material, do people have any question about our low operation and the uh, three triangular form to solve linear system? It's n by n linear system. Oh, we should have a significant less people here now. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I guess back to the course. Uh, if there's no question, so here is a checklist of things that important concepts. <coughs> things to remember in this short chapter. So we have this. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, wait, which page am I? Uh, okay. Uh, Analysis correction. Okay. So the TS office is not actually in Delta, it's the Taidak one. They are actually in Zidian one. Okay. So it's the next one that's the under revelation. Okay. Okay. So small correction. Uh, okay. Back to the class. So, so you remember there are three possible things can happen to a system. So unique consistent and uh, unique, unique, and uh, infinitely many solution, infinite, and uh, or it's inconsistent, okay? And uh, we see that there are uh, some systems are equivalent when you do row operation on it, and uh, we know there are three row operations <coughs> right here. And uh, <coughs> and uh, we found out that we will use row operation to put things in three triangular form. Then we are basically solve them. And also we get a little introduction to matrix. We think about matrix now as uh, writing all the coefficients of your or your system, and they're just omitting all the x i. And uh, so there is a coefficient matrix, and there is augmented matrix. And uh, to solve your linear system, then in general, you can just use row operation to get a strict triangular form and uh, you do back substitution. Okay. Okay. And, uh, but as we see this row operation into strict triangular form and the back substitution, basically work for things that has a unique solution. And, uh, but sometimes we don't get strict unique solution, then we don't get three triangular form, okay? So here is an example of uh, when you are not getting three triangular form. <coughs> so we have this uh, five by five system, and uh, here are the coefficients. <coughs> <coughs> and uh, what happened is, so you try to eliminate uh, the first columns, okay? So you do that. And uh, you see that uh, you get too lucky. And uh, so the second column also got a whole bunch of zero. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, now then you are not in three triangular form because uh, you have zero here. So you want a diagonal to be all non zero. But here, the second view is you already have zero here, and uh, you cannot really make this on zero. Okay, non zero. Okay. <coughs> and uh, well, but uh, you can try to follow your uh, three triangular form reduction by choosing a PV that is the third element here. Okay. So you see this is already zero here, and then you try to eliminate all those things into zero. Okay. And uh, yeah. <coughs> And uh, so you can use this uh, PV row and uh, this uh, first element on the PV element to eliminate all this. And you found all the fourth row also have this very strong symmetry. So it's one one here, two two here, one one here, one one here. So you eliminate all those and the fourth row also becomes zero. Okay. Then you find out that you may get a triangular form that's <coughs> too high. So you find out the coefficient got eliminated, eliminated, eliminated too much. So yeah, so this is what happened uh, when when your coefficients are too dependent on each other. So if you think about a two-dimensional example, you see, you know that when you remember in a two by two 
<coughs> in the two by two system, we have said that uh, bad things happen when your lines are parallel or they are parallel or they are parallel or they are just the same line, right? So here, similar thing happens. So some of the equations here are things in like parallel in very high dimension, and uh, that's why you get a whole bunch of zero here. Uh, something sure. Uh, <coughs> as a coefficient here, we can see that we get a kind of triangular form, but it's not strict because you get a whole bunch of zero here. And uh, what does this mean? It means that you have kind of parallel in your high dimensional planes and uh, this will make your system either inconsistent or has many solutions. And uh, what we have here is we have uh, inconsistent because you think about those zero rows. So those are the troublesome things we get here. So zero rows corresponding to, so we add all those x back. So zero row says that uh, all those zero x adding together equal to minus four, or zero x adding together to minus three. But that's just impossible. Whatever x you put here is zero here. Zero is not equal to four minus four, and zero is not equal to minus three. Okay, so this is just an inconsistent system. Okay, question so far? So yeah, so we are now going to things when we have inconsistent or many, infinitely many solutions. That's when we don't get a nice <coughs> strict triangular form. Okay. And uh, <coughs> okay. So another example, and uh, you can probably guess what this example will be. So we have an inconsistent one, and uh, this example, <coughs> if we eliminate it, then also the coefficient part uh, is not strict triangular form because there's too many zero. But uh, now it's a little different. So those B part is also zero. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> hmm? yeah. <coughs> so the B part is also zero. And uh, this is uh, one with infinitely many solutions because we have a whole bunch of zero equals zero here. And here we have a little more notation. That's yeah, <coughs> right. uh, we have a little more notation. So we think about the three equation, the actual equation. And uh, I guess in this form, then it's a little obvious. So you see that you are actually not getting a four five by five system, right? We were thinking that we had a five by five system. <coughs> so this is kind of like a two by two example. So we were thinking that we have a five by five system, but it's actually not. We are actually kind of actually getting a three by five system, right? So we have five variables, but only three non-trivial equations. Those two equations are just zero equals zero. Okay. So once again, you can think about the generalization of the two by two example, where if your two lines are uh, coincide with each other, then you are only having one equation. Right? <coughs> so here, this situation is. We actually only have three equations for five variables. Yeah. So you only have three equations for five variables, then there will be two variables that are free to be anything. Okay. <coughs> so here we give some names. So we have uh, three variables that are called the leading variable because they are the leading non zero element here. Okay. So here this. 1, 3, 5 are called the lead, lead variable, and uh, there are all other variables that are called <coughs> free variable because they can be picked free anything. Okay. So the 2 and the 4, they are where they are skipped, they are not leading any row, so they are free variable. And uh, so let's see how free, how we choose free variable to be free. So we can kick the free variable to the outside of the equation and uh, write our uh, system equation like this. Okay? And uh, so on the left hand side, now we are back to a uh, 3 by 3 system. This is the 3 by 3 system of a uh, uh, 3 triangular form, right? So we can kind of solve this for whatever value on this side. So you see that you can choose x2 and x4 to be anything and uh, you will have a solution for your system. Question? No. Okay. 
yeah, you can choose X2 and X4 to anything and you have three triangular form and you can have a unique solution for X1, X3, X5, okay? And yeah, so, so you see that you have infinitely many systems because you can say X1, X2, X4, anything and then you get a solution by doing substitution. So here we write it up. So X5 is going to be 3 and X4 equal to beta then you solve this back and you can get X3 equal to, hopefully you are getting is correct, this minus beta minus 6, etc. Yeah. Okay. And uh, okay, so this is a nice idea. You have uh, those lead variable and the free variable. But also I want to say something funny. So actually this concept is not too important because the choice of lead variable and the free variable are kind of arbitrary. Because uh, who are lead and who are free depends on how you order your variables. And uh, ordering your variables is, is kind of arbitrary. So say you write your equation as x1 plus x2. x1 minus x2 equals 0 or x2 minus x1 equals 0 doesn't really matter. So you can think about, so in this form you can think about x1 equal to x2 and x2 is a variable, free variable then your x1 is a lead variable. But you can also say that x2 equal to x1, x1 is a free variable then x2 is other thing. But yeah. So who is free, who is lead is kind of arbitrary. But uh, what is important is the number of lead and the number of free here. So if you only have a three relevant equation, then you have a three lead variable and uh, two free variable. Okay. So anyway, so that's uh, <coughs> this is an example where we have infinitely many solutions. Uh, question. And uh, once again, this should corresponding to so after you do this row operation and you make things, you get a whole bunch of zero totally zero rows in your augmented matrix, <coughs> then you will be <coughs> many solutions. Okay. And uh, <coughs> <coughs> yeah. And uh, now we talk about so it's a very similar thing. So basically formalize our row operation a little bit and uh, make it into a nicer form. And uh, <coughs> So we find out that we get any coefficient matrix, then we can reduce them into this row echelon form. <coughs> so it's basically doing the same thing we had before, so the operation to get a straight triangular matrix, but it might not be straight triangular because they have like some zero rows. And uh, also we have uh, extra, so uh, maybe use this. So we have uh, do a little extra thing is we make the first non-zero entry equal to one. And uh, this can be done by something we haven't used. So remember the second operation we can do to our rows uh, multiplying a non-zero number. Okay. So yeah, so we haven't used that anywhere yet. And uh, this is why we need the second operation. So we just multiply our row when you get your kind of triangular form. Then you just multiply every row by some number to make the first non-zero element one. Okay. And uh, okay, so other things. So here are the. <coughs> uh, <coughs> here are the mathematical definition of what the form we want to get. So we want okay. So let's try to draw this. So if uh, row k. <coughs> does not consider of entire zero. Then the leading number zero to the next row is more than this row. Okay, so we are basically saying. Okay, so these are our coefficient matrix. Right, let's get automatic. So we are saying, our rows are so non-zero part should kind of look at like this. So this is the H1 part. So here are all zero. So we are saying the non-zero part should get shorter and shorter. That's the second second line thing. So the leading non-zero should get uh, <coughs> yeah. So number of leading zero should get more and more. Okay. So that's the second line thing. And 
And uh, the third line, the third line is basically saying the same thing. And they say if you are all zero, then you should be, then you should be put on the lowest part. It should be low all those rows with non zero thing. Okay. So this is uh, row h row four. So h row means uh, this receding thing. Okay. And uh, but also we are <coughs> so you see that we can use the row operation to get a whole bunch of zero on the lower side. And uh, then we can multiply rho by some num non zero number to get all those leading terms to be one. Okay. So rho is rho form should look at this. Okay? And uh, that's the idea and let's see an example. So those are rho is rho form. So you see that uh, let's draw this, okay? So you see those non zero parts are uh, getting shorter and shorter, shorter and shorter. Right. And uh, the leading turn are one. Okay. <coughs> uh, so yeah, so basically only two conditions. The non zero part should get shorter and shorter and uh, the leading turn should be one. Okay. So that's the row echelon form. And uh, those are not the row echelon form. I guess uh, here is we can do some interaction. So anyone want to answer why there are not the row echelon form? <laughs> I think it should be really easy. <coughs> huh? Yeah? Huh? Uh-huh. Is what? This is the initial phone, you think? No, it's not the initial phone. <laughs> yeah, because we are thinking looking at the uh, non zero part, right? So so we are looking at length of a non-zero part. So the non-zero part is like this. Okay. And uh, so the non-zero part of the first row is shorter than the non-zero part of the second row. So this is also not in row h row form. Okay. And yeah. So you want the <coughs> so you want to like get the get rid of the uh, leading zeros and then uh, look at the other part, how long they are. And they want to, this to be shorter and shorter. And uh, you see that, so here, this is uh, <coughs> longer than this one, so that's another row echelon form. And uh, this is also not true. And uh, yeah, and I guess uh, there is also something, so the non zero should be stri strictly shorter. So say this matrix is also not in row h row form because uh, the non-zero part is like this, so it's a two and two part they should be decreasing on every row. Okay. And uh, okay, so that's why those two are not in row h row form. And uh, why is this not in row h row form? No. Yeah. Because the two and three are not one. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Good. And uh, yeah. And uh, <coughs> so yeah, so because uh, those two things are not one, so that's not in row echelon form. Okay, so this is pretty simple <coughs> definition. Yeah, but oh okay, but as you see, so this is not in row echelon form, but it's also pretty nice because it's in strict triangular form. So if the coefficient look at this, you can probably solve it already. But if it's in row echelon form, then it's uh, even easier. <coughs> so I guess what we are going is we want to put mm, mm, so something extra. Uh, so where we are going with all this is we are going to, so we start with a strict triangular form, then we go to row echelon form. And uh, next we are going to see a reduced row echelon form. And uh, what we want to get is, <coughs> we want, okay? So what we want to get is we want to get our coefficient equal to like this thing. One, 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 zero, zero, and uh, B here. So we think that if our coefficient look at like this, then you can just read the answer here, right? This means that this B is just your x1, x2, x3, x5, etc. okay? So we are trying to get closer to this thing, okay? And uh, that's why we are having the leading thing to be one. 
And obviously, you are not always going to get this. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm drawing this rock. Okay. So, uh, hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. But this is the idea we are getting. So we want to say we want to get a form where, when we uh, have a unique solution, the, then we coefficient matrix is just x1 equal to b1, x2 equal to b2, and uh, like uh, xn equal to bn, right? If you have this form, then it's very cool. You can just read the answer from those bits. Okay. So we are trying to get closer to and closer to this, and uh, we are also trying to get this thing while handling all the inconsistent and the many solution part possibility, okay? And uh, that's why our relational form is not like uh, one, one, one. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. And, but yeah, you can keep it in the back of your mind, this is where we are going. So we are getting a one, one, one part, okay? And uh, then there is this Gaussian elimination, which should also be covered in your high school. Yeah. So this is how you can get the relational form. You can use your uh, elementary operation, one, two, three, to get the relational form. And uh, okay. And uh, something I forgot to emphasize, but now at yeah, some point, so when we start talking about relational form, we actually already go to a binary system. So when we talk about three triangular form, that only happen when you have n by n system. But uh, for relational form, uh, we are including all the possibility of inconsistent and the main solution. So it actually work on general n by n system. You can have whatever number of equations, etc. Okay, and uh, <coughs> and uh, yeah, some note. So when you are in rotational form, then you can look at the lower part to see whether your things are consistent. As we see in example, if you have a row of this form 0, 0, 0, 1, so if you also reduce the, <coughs> reduce the B part of your matrix, and uh, then this will be inconsistent because it is 0 equal to 1, and uh, that should not be correct. And otherwise, it will be consistent. And, uh, I guess something we didn't say is if you have a total zero row, then you will have your system will be infinite, have infinitely many solutions. Okay. <coughs> uh, yeah. Hmm? Okay. And also, if you want to have a unique solution, then. Oh, okay. So, sorry. Uh, what I say is wrong. <laughs> uh, so, this is correct. Okay. So, <coughs> so you have uh, this kind of a row that is inconsistent. And uh, if your non-zero part of the relational form is a strict triangular system, then, <coughs> then your system has a unique solution. So let's draw a picture for this. And uh, so what can happen is that, uh, yeah, sorry, I need to draw this really long. So what we are saying is your system might look like uh, this. Right? So you have a three triangular here, so like this. So one, 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 and uh, something here. And uh, B1, da, 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 Bn. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, annoying. Uh, this is now our notation. It's a bit annoying. Okay. So here I should say the coefficient matrix. Because there is augmented matrix and coefficient matrix and it's a little annoying. Okay. <coughs> okay. So if the coefficient matrix is this strictly triangular form, then it's <coughs> as a unique solution because you can just do big substitution to solve all your variable here. 
and uh, then you can have a whole bunch of zero here and a whole bunch of zero here and it just means that you have a whole bunch of zero equation because you start with too many useless equations okay <coughs> so yeah so this is what happens when you have a unique solution okay and uh, but you see that you have uh, many solutions if your relational form like skip most things for example like this so you have one and then maybe one here and uh, one one right and uh, then you see that you have like a free variable here and uh, you have many solutions so say you have zero here zero here oh zero is not important uh, yeah <coughs> Okay, so that's the row is wrong form. And uh, then we have a little more then. So first, over determined system, and it just says you have more equations than unknown. And uh, yeah, <coughs> and uh, this don't say, don't really say anything about the system because some of the equation might be just redundant. Okay, so. <coughs> Over determinant system, here are some examples. You have more equation than unknowns. Okay. <coughs> and uh, so, as we say, it doesn't really say anything about system. It can be either inconsistent. Okay. So, I guess the one thing is it can be inconsistent because there are too many equations. So, it's like, for example, in this first equation, you have three equations and two unknowns. And uh, it can be inconsistent because there are too many lines and uh, you don't have a point that's the intersection of all the lines. Okay. <coughs> and uh, but it can still be consistent because uh, the system B and then uh, you make it into a row echelon form. Then you find out that you look at this and uh, you have a three triangular heat on the non-zero part. And uh, you find out that you just have a zero equation here that don't do anything. So it's kind of like a three by three system, and uh, so you actually have a unique solution. And uh, you can even have a system that has uh, more trivial lines, and it has infinite solution. So we find out that uh, over determined system can have any kind of a solution structure. But usually, this is a uh, very not rigorously defined, but usually it's inconsistent because you have too many equations. It is possibly to be inconsistent, but you don't really know. Okay, so that's over determined system. And uh, then there is under determined system where you have less equation than unknown. And uh, here we know what happened. Here we know that, <coughs> well, well, if you think about it, you put this into reduced edge row form, then it's impossible you get a strict it's impossible to get a three triangular form, right? Because because there are too many variables. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so these will always have infinitely many solutions. Okay, so for example, you might have the your original form look at this or. Hmm? Wait. Uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, okay, so this can still be inconsistent. <laughs> uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. And uh, this can still be inconsistent because. <coughs> sorry. So let's see the example here. <laughs> it's easier, okay. So here are some under determined system. And uh, you see that you can have a uh, very degenerate case where you do reduce the original form and then you got this zero row line, zero, zero line here. And uh, then you get a non-zero coefficient here. Then you see that this is still inconsistent. Okay. And uh, yeah, but also you can have Different reduced row echelon form here. <coughs> hmm. So, 
uh, yeah. And you see that <coughs> in this reduced original form. So if you reduce, okay. So if you reduce original form, don't have those. Uh, I get it. <coughs> don't have uh, these zero rows, then it will be consistent. But you see that the uh, number of lead variable cannot be cannot be equal to your solution equations because they are less variable than than equations. Sorry, they are uh, they are less equations than variables. Okay, and uh, so they will also always going to have free variable here. So you see, you have free variable here, free. And uh, that means that when your system is underdetermined, and uh, when it's consistent, you always have infinitely many solutions. Okay. So yeah, that's all we get. If you are consistent, then you will have infinitely many solutions, and they should be usually consistent. So this is also usually a very unprecise definition. Uh, I guess I don't want to write this, it's confusing. So this statement is always happen, but I want to say the underdetermined system is usually inconsistent. But as we see, it can also be inconsistent if you have a very funny example like this. Okay, uh, question. <coughs> Those are over-determined system and the under-determined system. And uh, okay, then it means it should be enough. Okay, so let's go to our last form. So it's a reduced row echelon form. And uh, <coughs> And it says it is something trial on row echelon form. So let's try to draw this. So row echelon form, we have like our non-zero, we have our non-zero rows, non-zero part of our row getting shorter and shorter, and the leading is one, 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 one. And uh, we have the second condition says that the first non-zero entry in every column is the uh, only non-zero entry. Okay, so you will say, so here we have something, something as before, and what we will say is, <coughs> so we will row each row form and we have one here, and uh, <coughs> so we look at the column here, okay? so we look at the column here, and uh, the only non-zero entry <coughs> should be the First on zero entry, so that should be this one here. And that means the all the upper part here it should be one. It should be zero. And uh, similarly, and uh, this should be zero. And uh, so all the upper part of those one should be zero. <coughs> and we okay, confuse myself a little. Okay, uh, let's ignore that for now. <laughs> if you don't have a question, uh, <coughs> yeah. Uh, but the idea here is uh, we are basically doing the big substitution. Right. Remember when we had a three triangular form. We say we need to do big substitution to get all the answers. But now we are also doing the big substitution in this matrix form. So basically, this getting the second condition is equivalent to you do big substitution to make your matrix in a nicer form. And I remember our goal <laughs> is like <that. coughs> so if you do reduce the echelon form for a strict triangular matrix, you will get our wanted, so we will get our wanted identity <coughs> matrix one 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 zero zero. So on uh, strict triangular. Uh, 
on three triangular matrix, you should get this identity matrix that's diagonal all one and zero other way. Okay. So that's the uh, idea of reduced error form. If you get this form, then it's really to just see the answer. <coughs> okay. And uh, <coughs> I think here I should want to say a little more. I should say the first non-zero entry okay, of a row is the only non-zero entry in this column. Okay. That's why I'm a little confused. Okay. So yeah, so the second line means that all those leading ones, you should have a uh, zero on the upper side and obviously you have a zero on the lower side so this is the only non-zero entry in this column okay so zero or other way so that's the reduced row echelon form okay and uh, 10 minutes should be enough okay and uh, then we say we can do Gaussian reduction to get row to get row echelon form and then we can do this Gauss Jordan reduction to get reduced row echelon form. <coughs> and uh, anyway, here are some examples. So first is this identity matrix we like a lot. So this is a thing we want to get, but sometimes we don't get because we get these weird free variables. So here is also a reduced row, is also a reduced row echelon form. So you see this is getting shorter, and this is leading one, and those leading one have all zeros on these rows on its columns. And here we have a reduced original form because it's getting shorter and those leading one is the only non-zero element. And here we have a leading one as a non-zero element. But okay, so but in this example then you see that you can have a funny thing here. So on this free variable here then <coughs> oh I guess here you also see so on the free variable then you can have more than one non-zero element. That's why this is a little confusing. <coughs> so this only non zero entry thing only happen on those leading ones. Okay. And anyway the process to get this is called uh called Jordan reduction. <coughs> uh, okay. Yeah, and you see here we have the second condition happening. This is the only difference to reduce the original form. And uh, so how we get reduced reduce the original form is pretty simple. So first you get your row echelon form, so it's all the reduce. So as we have seen, you do row operations, so you limit all the lower triangular parts, you get a whole bunch of zero. And uh, so this is like a kind of strict triangular form, but not quite strict, not quite triangular enough. And uh, then you multiply rows by numbers to get ones on the leading terms. So now this is your row echelon form. And uh, then you want to get the leading one as the only non-zero element. Then you just subtract back to get all the previous one zero. Okay. <coughs> okay. So you now use this row and uh, try to eliminate this minus one here. And uh, yeah, so you add this row up here and uh, we skip. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, I skipped your turn. Okay. So we do, so we do big subtraction basically. So we say we know what's this X3 here and uh, we want to eliminate all the measuring of X3 on the first two equations. So you add it back and uh, so I should circle this thing. So now important is this x3. So you know x3 equal to something and then you add it back to eliminate this minus one and the one here. <coughs> so you want to eliminate those two things here. And uh, then you get this zero and the zero. And uh, finally, so you get this back and back. 
So now those two lines doesn't depend on x3. Then you solve for x2 here, and then you want to eliminate the mention of x2 here. So you add this back, and uh, now you get 0 here. Yeah. And uh, now this is your reduced rational form. So all those leading variable is in like uh, identity matrix. The uh, leading variable only have coefficient one, and uh, <coughs> and uh, they are only measured in one equation. Okay. Okay. Question about how to get uh, reduced zero equation for five minutes. And yeah, so that's the equation. And uh, in this thing, we actually have uh, many solutions <coughs> because we have this H R X four being free here. And uh, yeah, so quadrant is is over determined or under determined? Anyone want to answer? <laughs> so, uh, well, being over determined and under determined actually has nothing to do with all the operation here. Only <coughs> depends on the number of a row in the column here. And uh, we see I have uh, more variables than equations. So this is an underdetermined system. And, uh, well, but here something useful happened. As we say, underdetermined system if it's consistent, it has infinitely many solutions, and we see it happen here. So we have this free variable x4 here. And uh, so you can say this free variable x4 is on alpha, and uh, then you can read uh, all the all the other variables is dependent to this alpha. So you see x3 should equal to x4, and the x2 should equal to minus x4, <laughs> x1 should equal to x4, etc. Yeah. So yeah, so you see that if you put your system into a reduced error row error form, then it's really easy to read all the solution. Okay. And yeah. So here is a bonus question that uh, in a more rigorous class, it will give you a proof, but here I just give you as a bonus question that like you can think it when you have free time. So reduced actual form is actually unique for any matrix, and they think about why reduced row actual form is unique. <coughs> yeah, and uh, oh, yeah, we have to have time. Okay, so that's reduced row actual form, and uh, one more thing you can say about from the example is homogeneous system. Okay, so a homogeneous system is just a system where the constant on the right hand side of the equation are all zero. So for example, this thing you see it's all zero here, and if you start with all zero, then you do any row operation and stay all zero. Okay, so so it's a very equivalent definition. If you are a homogeneous system, you do any equivalent system is still homogeneous. Okay, and uh, so you think about so you think <coughs> so what's special about this? So first, it's always consistent because you can have a trivial solution. You just put all the x equals zero, then then zero equals zero. You satisfy all the equations. Okay, and uh, you will think this is. Uh, very special case, and uh, this doesn't happen too much. So, okay. So, uh, uh, homogeneous system, look at this. So, you have some coefficient, and you have a whole bunch of zero here. And, uh, but actually, a pretty useful concept. And, uh, for example, it's very useful in analyzing on zero determinant systems. <laughs> because you can think about a homogeneous part, etc. <coughs> uh, that will probably see later and uh, <coughs> uh, here's uh, some interesting theorem about homogeneous system and underdetermined and uh, being underdetermined so if you have a homogeneous system and uh, is underdetermined then you must have a non-trivial solution means that the solution are equal to all zero <coughs> And uh, we have a uh, proof here. And uh, uh, it's basically trivial, right? It's a combination of uh, two things we know. 
So as we say, uh, homogeneous system is always consistent because it has this trivial solution. And uh, we also say that uh, for underdetermined system, if you uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, underdetermined system, if you are consistent, then you have infinitely many solutions. So so then you have this underdetermined system is consistent, and uh, so you have more than one solution. So it has more than this all zero solution. Okay, and uh, here we are spreading all the underdetermined system and this is a little more. So you count the number of variable and you see they are always going to be some free variable because they have too many equations. Okay, and uh, yeah, so here are uh, something you can remember from <coughs> this section. Given system, you can determine is consistent or inconsistent, and uh, consider you can find a solution state. And, uh, yeah, so basically, you can, I think, uh, there are more important things, the important things is those two. You use this Gaussian Jordan reduction to make your system into reduced rational form. Then you basically solve the system. You can determine whether it is. Consistent, inconsistent, and uh, there are whether there are infinitely many solutions. Okay, and uh, then we have uh, some definition here. So overdetermined, underdetermined, and homogeneous. They are very good definitions. Okay, so that's it. See you on Wednesday early morning. <coughs>